and he can't retire. <laughs> because you don't walk away from the passion. Dr. Pumpkin. Thank you, Tom. So this is actually about my father, Harry Pownall. Before you start, there's a microphone there. Turn it on. Okay, and I can. The water is with you over on the table. Hello, hello. Okay. <laughs> it's not turned on. I probably have an okay voice. Um, so uh, let me take a look at this first. Yes, that's Dad. And just a couple of weeks ago, months ago, years ago, my sister sent me a photograph of. Dad and his three brothers. And they were in their mid 20s, 20 and up. The youngest one was about 18. And they looked like movie stars. They, they had this slick back black hair that you saw in all the movies of that era. Well, uh, that helped Dad find Mom. Uh, <laughs> and uh, those of you who knew Mom, my mother, uh, Dad and Mom both went to Millersville College. And for somebody to, born in 1911 and 1912, to go to college and complete college was unusual in the time, especially for a female. And uh, so they met there, and uh, Mom was from the Ephrata area. Dad was from Solanco, Little Britain to be exact, where he lived with his uh, parents and three brothers on a farm, milking the cows in the morning, not many cows. Uh, and uh, plowing and uh, cutting hay and mowing hay and baling hay later. And so in the family, uh, oh, flash forward a couple more years. So mom and dad graduated and they both took jobs in, 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 during the depression. And uh, my mom took a job in Drewmore Township. And I don't remember when my dad took a job. But my mom made $100 more, not a month or a week, a year. They made $800 and $900 a year. And my mom made $900 a year. Why would they give a woman more money? Because she got the best grades. The mom was the smartest one in the family. And I say that even though I have all degrees, etc. Mom was the smartest one in the family. And she taught everybody. She was very much into music. She had uh, the children's choir at Bellevue Presbyterian Church. She organized Roseanne, Carol, and Becky into the trio of the church at that time. And uh, they uh, practiced at her home. We had, eventually had a grand piano in our home on Newport Avenue. And uh, then they went on to grow up in a church and do more singing, etc. Uh, one of the things I think about the United States, and I've said this to my friend Karina, is that you can be born anywhere and be successful. And I think about, not myself, my sister Carol, who went to Juilliard School of Music. How many people, um, which is the premier at the time. There are a lot of good schools. I mean, you have Curtis in Philadelphia. You have other schools around the country. But that, that's the one that was, had kind of the Harvard brand. And uh, so if you push yourself uh, or you have the proper encouragement, you can do it. And again and again, the number one, in, number one and two ingredient in education, number one is the parents. Number two is a child. I mean, they have to have some responsibility growing up. Anyways, I back, I'm going to backtrack now. Drewmore Township. So they worked for a couple of years, and uh, then they moved to Chestnut Level. Anyone know where Chestnut Level is? All right. I didn't know where it was until I passed through it today on the way from Baltimore, <laughs> there's Chestnut Level, because my mom always talked about Chestnut Level and, and living there. And then they moved to a uh, farm in uh, near Little Britain, and my mom was quite a farmer. She had a garden, she had a flower garden, she uh, 
was very, she did a lot of canning. Uh, I don't know what we, she had four children don't know, with, on teacher's salaries, don't know what they, they'd have eaten, etc. cetera. And uh, she always had food off the land. And the, one of the things I disliked was going out on, after it rained, okay, Henry, uh, it's, it's just rained and it stopped, now is a good time to pull the weeds. <laughs> and everybody knows that, but I didn't want to do that. Okay, so uh, the garden was one thing. Uh, Roseanne and Carol, they, oh, I'm going to go chronologically now. Out of chestnut level, onto that farm with a thousand chickens. My mom had a thousand, thousand chickens. And did you know in the house now, my mom had 50 chickens at one time, up over your garage where you park your car. And we'd go out there and kill rats. It was like living out in the country. And I guess we worked country, country at the time. And uh, so my brother, uh, my late brother, uh, was one of the last, in one of the last classes at Salisbury High School across the street. And uh, there were, he said he had a large class. There were 18 students. <laughs> And, I, and that's why they combined, as uh, Dr. Tom said, they had to combine the districts because there weren't enough students. The, the state of Pennsylvania said you have to have 2,500 students in K through 12, and to do that, they put together uh, four, four school districts. So uh, we're, we're out of Chestnut level. On the farm, Carol was born, and mom and dad are still teaching. And then uh, shortly thereafter, they moved to Newport Avenue. That was around 1949. You probably have a better idea. And at that time, my dad was driving a black Pontiac. My, my dad, okay, so this is about my dad. He loved two things, cars and clothes. And any way to bankrupt the family is to be in love with cars and clothes. And I, I'm so glad now in this period, I wouldn't even say generation, it's a period of time, that people are considerably more casual. I must regret to tell you, though, at my hospital, unlike at the medical school, I'm not allowed to wear jeans to work. So it's a pleasure to be here with you. <laughs> um, so, so we're in Gap. Uh, Carol was born on the farm. We're in Gap, and Dad is tearing up the house, tearing up the garage mainly, moving walls, etc. And uh, we bop off to Gap, Gap Centralized School. And we walk to school. And then, as all of you know, all about my fourth grade, they put a new highway through the town. And so we had to cross Route 41, which wasn't so bad at the time, right, Becky? Right. But now it's a real hazard. I've never seen so much, for, for a town of 1,000 people, to have so many trucks going east-west and from Newport to Gap is just unbelievable. Uh, we should charge them some sort of a toll or something, I mean, get some money out of them. I guess you do when you make them pay for the, overpay for their coffee or whatever when they come through. And so that was fourth grade, fifth grade, and as Dr. Tom said, 1955, we're off to Pequay Valley High School. Well, my, my dad, uh, while he was supervising principal of Salisbury Township, was also responsible for doing things like going to all of the one-room schools. And I remember almost all of them. Uh, Buchlin, Spring Garden, Mount Airy, Mount Pleasant, Center, Limeville, uh, let's see, a couple of more, hmm? Millwood. Millwood, Millwood, shouldn't forget that. That's where my mother taught. And, uh, it was amazing to me. Do you remember Becky and, and Margaret, Marvin Smoker? He was in our class. And he was one, not K. We didn't have K. We had first through eighth grade in a, in a one-room school. He ended up being a banker. Fulton Bank. You all know Fulton Bank. It's a big bank in Maryland, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. And so uh, it it showed me again how out of something that seems sort of primitive, somebody could be so uh, 
unbelievably successful. But I remember from high school, he was a very good student. He's very studious, and uh, he uh, stuck to that very well. So we are going into seventh grade at the big new school where we all were. And uh, what was your room number for seventh grade? <laughs> Mine was 14 and Mrs. McCarty, and my locker number was 38. <laughs> well, this is one thing, I've said this to my friend here many times. You know, in college, I was a terrible student. I had some psychological issues, I had insomnia, but I, I also, I bragged to them also, okay, I got a C in chemistry but I can still get a C in chemistry and most of my classmates cannot because I remember a lot. I remember all, and I go, go, go over and over again. And I never appreciated that until like 10 years ago that I had a good memory. And, and so we're in this new school. Uh, Roseanne was in 12 with hoops and Carol was in 11 with Miss Myers and I was with Mrs. McCarty. Uh, so we trucked our way through school. We were in junior high school. Tom was a wonderful baseball player, and the things I remember about him is Whitey Ford, right? Whitey Ford was his idol because he was another left-handed pitcher who played for the Yankees. And uh, Tom and I spent too many summers and some holidays painting to pay for stuff. And uh, we always thought we were, were underpaid, but everybody thinks they're underpaid. <laughs> so uh, we made it through, we got through college, Tom and I both got our degrees and that's just water over, over the dam. Uh, but Tom could also have played, if he'd have concentrated, he'd been a, on basketball like he did baseball, he'd have been a really terrific basketball player, but his love was, uh, baseball. And after, uh, I, I didn't realize this at the time until you told me last year, the reason he played Legion base, Baseball, which was the competitive league in and after high school, was because I drove him to the games. <laughs> he didn't have a car. I didn't know that. I thought, I thought we were just going to the games together. <laughs> no. And so, uh, and some of those games were fun. We'd get done painting for the day and then go off tired and worn out. And I don't know if we ever went there covered with paint. I was you usually- drove and I changed clothes in the back seat. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That, that was it. So um, that was baseball. And then get back to my dad in high school. He, uh, he no longer taught. And when they formed the new high school, uh, they only need one principal. And my dad was principal for Salisbury, and Arthur Eshelman for uh, Paradise. And who got the job? Well, Arthur Eshelman did. And I thought, oh, that's really, really sad. And then over time, I realized he got the job as business manager. Okay, the principal has to deal with everybody's personal and financial problems. Who wants that job? I, I have some administrative responsibility now, and I don't like it. I don't want to deal with other people's personal problems. And one of them last year, I was made director of the graduate school, which was a job that I did not want, but it had the name of my former mentor's name on it, the, the Wild Gatto Chair of Medicine, so I, I couldn't turn that down, but I didn't, I didn't go looking for it. But think, think, things, like, things like that happen. Uh, my dad got the job, though, then as business manager. Now, there's a good job. You don't have to, you don't have to deal with a lot of people. You deal with vendors. You keep track of books, etc. So he actually had a better job. And the school board met, I think, once a month, Thursday nights, and uh, if we'd have been, I don't know if this is still true, but at, it wasn't, like, Warwick School District, District is a union. They have one school board because they put it all together. 
Peckway Valley was a jointure. So you had five school members, school board members from Paradise, Salisbury, New Milltown Independent, and Lake Hawk Township. So you have 20 guys there. And at that time, we could, you know, couldn't get together 20 students sometimes. So uh, that's what they did for a while. The school grew, uh, grew. I do get Lancaster online, so I do get the news of, of Lancaster County. Most of it's about Mannheim Township and, and Hempfield uh, School District dealing with all their transgender issues. Uh, not in Mannheim Township, that's only Hempfield. Uh, and uh, so, and, or I get to read about Amos Miller. Anybody know who Amos Miller is? Oh, gee, he, he was the guy who the federal government was after because he wouldn't allow his food to be inspected. And, uh, and, uh, and it went on for years. Finally, uh, you know, the feds fi finally won. So moving along, um, the, um, we went through school. Uh, Tom went off to Millersville. Roseanne went off to Elizabethtown, as did I. Uh, Carol went to Philadelphia Musical Academy and then to uh, uh, New York City. And the, uh, went there various ways. And uh, dad was stayed here, and, but it was, he, he died at the age of 55. And I was in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania and got a phone call from Dr. Beecher. Dr. Beecher called me and said, your dad's just passed away. And I thought, hmm. And, and the, the, the impact of that statement changes over many years. One of the recent um, statements of that, restatements of that, that I've had is, wouldn't it be great, at least I say that for me, for me at the age of 40 to know my mother when she was 40? How would that be? Because uh, I was 22 when my father died, and so the experience was that I never got to know him other than being his child, not as a real adult. Uh, the, I make the joke sometime, uh, where'd you grow up, Henry? Uh, Texas. You didn't move here until you were 30. Yeah, and that's when I grew up. <laughs> And that's, that's kind of the, the, the age line. And there are different things that happen in your lives that make you not age faster, but not get older. Age faster, grow up. And so, you know, having children makes you grow up. Uh, having a responsibility for another person make, make, makes you grow up. And uh, I didn't have that until I was 43. Had a child when I was 43. And interesting part about that is that there wasn't much pressure, and Dr. Rosales knows I say this all the time, my daughter was low management, low management. She got good grades, she didn't get any trouble, didn't argue much, she argued some, she still argues some, and uh, went off to school, got through college, did a lot better than I did, and uh, has three children in Houston, and so, uh, now, I, I can't say she's having as much fun with her kids as I, am, I did with her, uh, but then she has three. So, uh, back to uh, other things I remember uh, about my, my mom and dad <clears throat> is that the, they were both elders in Bellevue Presbyterian Church, but uh, it's an interesting thing, my dad taught Sunday school class and uh, I won't mention any names, but I do remember the name. His first name was uh, James R. Uh, came up to and said that you can't teach Sunday school because you're not a member of the church, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> well, my father was Quaker. And uh, living in Southern Lancaster County, he went to the Eastland Quaker Meeting House. And uh, he took me there only on one occasion not, it was very memorable. Uh, I, uh, it wasn't exactly like they say, you sit around until somebody has something to say. It's more like a conversation uh, that, that somebody would bring up a topic and, and discuss that. And uh, so eventually he joined the Presbyterian Church, 
I remember when he was baptized, and so he was a, an adult being baptized. That's not so unusual these days. And uh, th then he continued to teach Sunday school, which I do. I teach Sunday. I have some, if you ever want some PowerPoints of my Sunday school lessons, uh, my best, I did all of Pilgrim's Progress. How many have read that? By John Bunyan. And it's a story of a, a religious life of a man named Christian going from the city of destruction, which I, you know, I put up my PowerPoint, city of destruction, I put a picture of Houston. <laughs> and then uh, going, going on the life journey to the celestial city and uh, having all these characters that are, have names that have to do with human characteristics. Someone named, uh, oh, Lazy, grumpy, etc. That sounds more like something out of uh, Snow White and Seven, Seven Dwarves, but uh, those are a lot of human, human characteristics. The other one that I enjoyed doing was the book of Ecclesiastes. And you should read that because it, and when I show the slide, I have pictures of uh, Albert Camus, who wrote the, the uh, which one was it? not the prisoner, French existen they're all French existentialist writers, but in the middle I have a picture of Solomon who wrote Ecclesiastes because he was truly the first existentialist writer. So uh, let me see if I can wander back to other things about my dad, what he, what he liked to do. I said he liked cars. He bought a new car every two years. And uh, of course, in, at that time, some cars didn't last more than three years. Uh, and his clothing, uh, here's a quiz. At that time, six years ago, what was the number one, or through almost any time, the number one downtown men's store for clothing in Lancaster? Who said what in Shan? That's what it is. That's where my dad went. He'd go in there and find out where he could sales. Because he did try to buy it on sale. Uh, I had this guy all the time. And tonight I sat and had a drink in the men's section because it's now the Marriott. Well, we have a book back here that has all the, the people from Gap who worked at Barton Machine. Oh, it was a magnificent store. They never bought anything from me there. No, I, I was going to Hager's, Penny's, um, what's the other one? Where do you suppose he got those clothes? He bought them all at Robert Hall. Robert Hall. So we go in there and everything's on a plain pipe rack. Uh, the, uh, let's see, the Penny's was okay. I also remember my nickname as a child was Tubby. And uh, the, the, uh, they had an, uh, an... He's not using it, you may as well turn it off. The euphemism for that was, which was husky. You weren't tubby, you were husky. That's, his so mom say, we'll take you. And so, uh, and I used to tease my sisters who were not overweight, but I'd say they had to go into the chubbet section. <laughs> so other sidebars about dad oh he, he went to see his, his mom down in Little Britain Township almost every two weeks and I, I love to go there with him because there's lots to do around on the farm uh, we, my, and my grandmother was a very indulgent grandmother she gives too much sugar and jelly and stuff uh, and, the, uh, and my other grandmother was much more strict. I did not enjoy going there. Uh, that was over near Ephrata. And we had, oh, went, how many great vacations? We used to go to uh, Ocean City, some summers. When my, only could stay for one week. My dad would come back and forth sometimes to go to work. Uh, does that sound familiar? Huh? Uh, and uh, then 
when I was about 12 or 13, Roseanne, Carol, and I, and mom and dad, got in a family car and went to Miami Beach and for Lions Club convention. And uh, the, we wanted, we stayed at a couple, at the time it was Route 1 that went south. Now we have 95. Uh, and I imagine still that if anybody been on the route to go play us a place called South of the Border. <laughs> okay, <laughs> more than a couple of chuckles there, yeah. South of the Border, where they were filled up because it was very popular. So we played in another state place that we were very happy with. They had a swimming pool. That was great. And we finally made it to uh, Miami Beach, and we thought we were going to stay in the Fontainebleau, which still exists. And they, they were all filled up. That was the headquarters for the meeting. So we stayed at the Empress, which was a sister hotel, which that was fine because they also had a swimming pool. Salt water. I remember that, salt water, because right next to the ocean. Uh, so, so that was fun. Went over to see my brother. Dad drove over to New Orleans. Uh, my brother's playing in the Roosevelt Room of the local hotel. No, Hotel Roosevelt. It was a flamingo room of the Roosevelt Hotel. And so my sisters and I got our first Shirley Temples. <laughs> and uh, then we made it back home. And now, what did Dad do for a hobby? Not much. So I'm sort of imitating him now. I used to have lots of hobbies, and I just kind of dribbled away. I don't jog anymore. I don't play soccer anymore. And uh, Dad was never much into athletics. And at Peckway Valley, I played on the soccer team. And we had some very good teams, right? Yeah. Uh, he almost never came to the games. Now. That is a 1950s, 60s dad. Now, the, the parents go to the games, they're trying to kill the referee uh, <laughs> or the other parents. Uh, so times have, have, have changed quite, quite a bit. Uh, what other avocations did he like? Uh, he was a Republican, but he never discussed politics much. Um, wasn't involved in Republican committees at all. Uh, he, well. He was in Boy Scouts. Hmm? Boy Scouts. Some in Boy Scouts, but Boy Scouts here was not that great. I mean, I was in Boy Scouts. I did get to go to the Jamboree in Valley Forge though one year. That was okay. Uh, and, but the other thing he was involved in was uh, not Boy Scouts, Lions Club. They still have Lions Club here? Yeah. yeah. It started again. Oh, it did? Mm -hmm. and, and that was what the convention was in Miami Beach, Lions Club convention. And they still do a lot of good work with Lion's Eye and uh, uh, some of the stuff they do with the hospitals I know at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, what are Well, this I remember. I can remember. We, um, it started a band and brought music into the township. He I must have had a pretty good advisor on that. And who do you think that might have been? <laughs> Mrs. Pownall. <Yeah. laughs> yeah, they had, had a band and we had uh, kind of maroon and gold uniforms. Well, we, we bought another band. Right. That we had to take from other, another band that was getting better ones. <laughs> Not exactly 76 trombones, huh? <laughs> that was when the high school was across the way. Yeah, before the Peckway Valley. Yeah. Right, before Peckway. And how, how many years was he uh, principal of the Salisbury Township School District? It would have been from 20, I mean, from 1950 approximately to, oh, only six years. The rest of the time was at Peckway Valley. Okay, okay. Did he teach then before he became principal? He, he taught taught, when he was he principal. He taught a science course. Physics. Well, yeah. well, it did seem like he just went from, from Little Britain to come up here and became head of the school system. 
Was there any kind of education before that? Experience? Any what? Any education of career. Was he a teacher down in Little Britain? Or did he just move to the South? Oh, no. He, 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 I mean, at that time, Millersville was not Millersville University. It was oh. Millersville State Teachers College. And it was, and even where Roseanne and I went to school, uh, Elizabethtown College, was, lots of it was just uh, elementary education majors. Now all the schools have changed. They really brought curriculum, science, engineering, chemistry, you name it. So uh, no, he taught. I remember he taught physics, and I used to go to school with him in the second floor of this building across the street and go in and do an experiment, which was to take out the sample of mercury that they had there. And Roseanne and I would pour it out on the table and the mercury would move around. And then we'd heard that, that you could form an amalgam of mercury with silver. So we took out a dime and watched the dime collect all the mercury on there and get really, really shiny. Not knowing at the time that mercury is, in some of its form, highly poisonous. The metal is not actually, it's mostly mercury salts. So, uh, that, yes, my, uh, another story, my daughter came in, was doing something stupid. Uh, she wanted to make the perfect cup of tea. So wanted to get the right temperature, happened to use a oral thermometer to do that. Well, what, the oral thermometer only goes up to 110 degrees, if even. Well, it broke, and when she got down, down to the bottom of her drink, she saw mercury there. <laughs> and so she went crazy, and I said, well, it's harmless, it's only metal. It's not the mercury salt, because I was the chemist. <laughs> but she didn't believe the chemist. So she was on the, uh, the poison hotline finding out and being told it's harmless, it's not the salt, it's just the mercury metal, it'll go right through you. So that was, that was an interesting case. And then, speaking of all the one-room schools, we would go there every summer to oil the floors. The floors were all hardwood floors, they had almost no finish on them, and somebody asked me what kind of oil, well, my guess was it was linseed oil because that was used as a finish uh, at the time, and when we left that place, if you, it would be like a skating rink. Uh, it, it was so slippery, uh, but the, uh, it, it, if it's linseed oil, the, the photooxidation of the double bonds and the little fatty acid there would eventually give you a varnish-like finish. And the next year, we'll go back and do the same thing again. They were really, really dusty floors, and when, there wasn't much uh, Becky and Margaret, do you remember? We, we didn't see much maintenance in our schools, did we? At Gap. Uh, who, Mr. Hess was one of our janitors. And the next one was... Uh, Mr. Hershey. Hmm? Who? Mr. Hershey. There was an Ira Hershey and a Harry Hershey. Harry Hershey. Uh, yeah, Harry Hershey it was, yes. It lives right up the street from where you live now. Yeah, all right. It's quite a while ago. So... I'm um, trying to think of anything he did recreationally. Uh, there wasn't much. Didn't travel much. It was most clothes, school, kids, uh, staying out of trouble, which he did quite well. Uh, and that's about it. What? When he, when he, he taught and he also was responsible for the Salisbury Township school system, mm -hmm. including purchasing and Everything and hiring and, uh, and, and everything. Yes, he had to hire. Okay, this is the comparison. We had what, 12 one room schools? Mm -hmm. So he'd hire. He didn't have to hire. They, they, most of them stayed on. My mom was in that one room school for quite a few years. And, uh, but was responsible for curriculum. But it, it wasn't under the kind of control there is now, uh, where, well, I live in Texas. Texas is crazy. Uh, with, with, with their education system. Uh, I, my, my belief in education is you have a diversity of education. Not everybody has to learn the same thing. Uh, that comes out of biology. If the diversity of biology, things survive. If you make everything the same. Uh, Irish potato famine. Everybody remember that? 
All the potatoes died because they are one species and one kind of bug attacked it and so it produced a catastrophe. So just as in, in uh, horticulture, I think in, in people culture, you need a diversity of skill sets and education, etc. But I'm not in charge, never will be. So, and what was the rest of your question? Yes. He yes. had a budget. He had. He managed the money. He yes. He did. He was. Yes. He went to the school board, and even at Peckway Valley, he and Mr. Eshman went to the school board uh, once a month. With uh, if if it was done the way I think, you go to the board and say, "This is our plan. Do you approve it?" Because these people don't have time to come up with a plan, but they do have good judgment. I hope to uh, say, "Well, that sounds like a good plan. Let's go ahead with that." Uh, that, but this was really a primitive operation with the uh, high school that only went, it, it didn't, Salisbury High School didn't go up to the 12th grade. It stopped at 11. And for that reason, my brother had to go to another school and the school would pay the tuition to go to that other school, except my brother went to a private school called the George School in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. And that was a, Big, big change going from that place to a private school in suburban Philadelphia. So, yeah, he had to do everything. He didn't even have an assistant supervising. He was supervising principal, principal of the school, taught physics, and went out and oiled the floors in the, in the summer, dragging me along. Now, I'm, I'm sure you, I was of no help. I think I was just being babysat. I don't remember that. Thing. And that's what it was, millage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it still millage? Uh, Do, yes, in, in Salisbury Township. Oh, it is? Okay, yes. In, in City of Houston, the tax rate is 2.5% of your property value, unless you have a homestead, which is, can be a lot. So uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I left out. About, oh, well, I have to say, I mentioned his brothers earlier. His, his brother, he had one brother. Okay, my dad died when he was 55. He had another uh, who died when he was 38 of uh, first and fatal myocardial infarction, heart attack. And then he had a, a third brother, uh, another brother who made it into his 80s, etc. But he had another brother who lived to be 100. So I always say, you know, I'm in the business of saying, well, we have to look at the genetics. We've got to see you're related. And, and in a doctor's office, so they'll always ask you about your family history. Well, what happened to your dad and your mom, your cousin, your brothers, your sister, etc.? Well, it's not, you know, you have one, 38, 55, 85, 100. Tell me where the genetics is. So uh, I don't worry too much about that. I just try to live well. So, but my, uh, some of the classes at Salisbury were, had only had 11 people in the class. And my brothers had, my brother said he had a big class, he had 18. And we had, in our class, Tom, 70, about 72 people. Yeah. But that was three townships, right? Yes. Yes, and at the time, uh, most of them were from Paradise. Paradise had the larger population. And New Milltown Independent might have had more school board members than they did students. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, no, nobody lives there. They have a one-room school that uh, is right along Peckway Creek, and I don't know anybody who ever went there. Because they're only, it's like this. You look at a map. Hart Hershey did. Who? Hart Hershey, who was one of our representatives to the uh, Pennsylvania uh, House some, time, some years ago. Well, that's a great bragging rights for New Milltown. Actually, he's, he's, he and his brother are speaking next month. <laughs> but and, uh, one of the, uh, you'll be talking about uh, being the farm and, and New Milltown. 
So was he related to Ryan Hershey? I or, only somewhere along the way. Or Lem Hershey. There, uh, there are a lot of Hershey's. There were uh, a lot of Hershey's in our class. Louis, Sylvia, Ken. Uh, there are four. So that's four out of 80. Ryan was on the school board at Petway Valley. He was. And I, I worked with Ryan for one summer, I think with Bill Bear, and he, he was a painter. He was a house painter. Reminded me of... Are there any panel ancestors in Lancaster County and Walter? My cousin Walter lives in Little Britain. Um, uh, on, some, on any of the original panel property? No. No. Oh, yes. Yes, he does. But only two or three acres carved out of the original farm. And one of the things that I visited, I was really, really interested, and I'm not going to be able to do it this trip. It's very interesting, though, is that I explored a lot. How many here have heard of the Christiana Riot? That was my question. I was going to ask you, are you part of that family? That is very, very famous, and I think it's a segment of history. Unfortunately, it was in Salisbury Township, <laughs> not Salisbury Township. Uh, and I only realized a few years ago the house where that took place was on my family farm. Oh. Levi Pownall. Well, they have a historic society too. Oh, I'm sure they do. And they, oh, they, they have, have books on it. Oh, they do. And they, I have a, a PDF saved on my computer that has all the documents from the Christiana Library. Oh, great. Yes. Unfortunately, the house isn't there anymore. Oh, the Parker house isn't there anymore, but I think Levi Pownall's house is there. I have a picture of it on my wall. Yes, I think that is. Yes. And, and the reason I remembered it is when I was a child, I'd gone to visit. Uh, his wife was Jean Pownall, just as my mom's name was. His name's Barnard. And I remember the experience because it was the first time I ever picked up a pair of binoculars and looked across the valley. What is it, Upper Valley Road, Lower Valley Road? And uh, then I realized that what I was looking at was probably the location of where the Parker House was. But that, the picture of the house is still, of the old house that's just gone is there, but so is the house where they, uh, some of them went. And the, one of the statements I remember in the description was that after the riot, uh, the, the Gorsuch son went back to Maryland and met up with some other people and said, uh, we have to do something about this because we've just lost some slaves. One of the other people was John Wilkes Booth. That was his college roommate. Better yet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, thank you for that. that that's, that's really good. Because I'm trying to make that connection. It's college roommate. I, I shot a video for them uh, a couple months ago. And I'll have to send it to them. You probably really like that. You shot the video where? Of, of uh, somebody telling the story. Oh. And including pictures and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's my story. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Any questions? Jean Pannell, who lived on that farm, was at my wedding. Way to go. Connections. My husband was raised in the spring house on that farm. And uh, he had quite a few stories to tell about old Mr. Pannell. <laughs> <laughs> they never had any children. No. <laughs> it scared my husband so bad that he said he finally had stopped at the door of the barn. Whoa. So when his parents found out about that, they weren't too happy about it. Well, very good. Let me, let me make one, one closing statement, if I may. If, if you haven't appreciated anything else tonight, uh, Henry has 
as early as a, as a high school, 16, 17, 18 years, was vastly interested in family artifacts. And you get a sense that, that having lived, lived away from this area for 50 years, and have been here incidentally over that time, how much attention he has maintained to who his family is and all the family connections in Gavin Salisbury Township. We appreciate it. I mean, uh, a lot of the stories that you tell and about your father, and this is why I wanted to, uh, in, my, in my research for the book that I wrote, uh, I kept coming up with Harry Pownall and the things that he did and the things that he, um, that the people remembered. And uh, a couple of stories that I, I have put in the book and uh, just I wanted to make sure that we got, um, there's, a, there's a chapter in there on the, the teachers and I included him in that, in that, cha in that uh, chapter. And uh, so I was just, I just thought it was just so great that we could actually talk to his son who lived through all that. Lived we through. appreciate him what you've done tonight. Thank you so much. And I think there's a lot of people here who experienced what you did as a child. And I think that's really neat. So thank you so much. Thank you.